here and you can see her there. She always likes to be involved in this. All right, um, this morning we're gonna do a flow for the liver and gallbladder meridian lines. Um, so I'll be talking a little more about Yin's relation to uh, Chinese medicine and Taoist theories. Um, your liver meridian runs down the inside basically of your legs and gallbladder meridian runs down the outside of your body. So outside of uh, point of the hips um, will get that. Whereas anything that pulls on the groins when you abduct, that's gonna get the liver meridian. A um, little more detail for that as we go along, but just so you know what we're gonna do. We'll start as we always do with um, our centering meditation. So find a comfortable spot on the floor. On your mat, you can sit as I am, one foot in front of the other, with or without cat. Is that my Helen that just came in? I can't see. I have to come closer. Oh, it's Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Um, all right, so um, if you want to lie back, then feel free to do that. Feet slightly apart and have the inner knees resting together. That's uh, always um, easy on the low back if you want to start off that way. Hands, they can be in your lap if you're seated, on your thighs, palms up or down, doesn't matter. <clears throat> if you're lying back, they can be by your sides, palms up or down, or uh, one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart is a nice um, complete circle of energy. Yes, you can sit on my lap. She always asks, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Shrug your shoulders up to your ears and then let them slide down your back away from your ears and tuck your chin in slightly. That'll lengthen the back of your neck. Let your eyes fall softly shut. Just settling in to your room, onto your mat, into your space. So let go of your morning thus far. Let go of whatever's in store today those lists, whether written or mental. Just set them aside for now. Let go of your anxieties and worries just for this next hour. It's for you, body, mind, and spirit. Do a body scan. Take note if there are any areas that are in need of a little extra care or attention this morning. It can be on any level, physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. And whatever does arise, it's not that you'll dwell on it for the next hour, but acknowledge it. Create some space for it. Maybe forgiveness. When we check in again at the end of the class, you may notice things have subtly shifted in perspective or sensation. And then begin to notice your breath. Don't change anything, just become aware of it. Whereabouts in your chest cavity are you breathing? How fast are you breathing? Are you breathing through your nose or your mouth or a bit of both? So begin breathing in and back out again through your nose. Pull that air in. Trace its path as it flows up your nose, down your throat, into your lungs. And then back out that same pathway. Feel that swirl past the rings of the nostrils as the breath exits the body. Notice the difference in temperature right there at the rings of your nostrils, how the air is cooler when it first swirls in and warmer as it swirls back out. Notice how your breath is slowing down. 
deepening. Maybe your belly's moving a little more as the diaphragm works. We're getting to the bottom of the lungs where the air tends to stagnate because we tend to be upper chest breathers. So yet another benefit of yoga is cleaning out our lungs. Feel the ground beneath you. Feel the sky above you. And you are breathing. Feeling that rooting energy. At the same time as that uplifting energy from the sky. You may like to even out your inhales and exhales, but it's not necessary. You can put a count to two or three, four on the inhale and then that same steady count on the exhale. Or you can simply use this little mantra. I am breathing in. I am breathing out, or simply breathing in, breathing out. <clears throat> Just another way to help focus your mind. You can't turn off your thoughts, but you can learn to focus them, direct them. And focusing on the breath is what we do in yoga to help calm the mind. clarity. On another inhale, pay attention to your lungs. Notice how they move in four directions beneath your rib cage, which also expand. Watch the contraction on the exhale. Send your lungs some gratitude for being healthy. So this is the yogic breath that we're breathing right now. It's the main one that we use in yin. From time to time, we use the ocean breath. And as I said, this helps focus, direct our thoughts. The more we practice with this awareness and focus, the better the benefits of the practice. And finally, set your intention for today's practice. What's your purpose in coming to your mat? It can be personal, it can be for another person, it can be for something bigger than yourself, global. And now if you are lying back, make your way slowly to one side and pause there. Everyone can blink their eyes open and closed a few times. <coughs> yeah, she knows what's coming. Then if you're seated, you'll want to lift your knees and straighten them out. Then to give them a little bounce. <coughs> Rock from the top of the hips, point and flex. <coughs> Push into the mat with one of your hands. Actually, you don't even, if you're on your side, you can just roll right over onto your tummy. I forgot, we're going to start off with a little bit of a back bend. Always good to warm up the back, so if you were seated, then come over onto your tummy. Oops, my mat's not straight. All right, so, <coughs> you can see me. Um, we're going to, this is called Sphinx Pose, for those of you that are new here. Um, actually, it was on Leanne's quilting post for my quilter friends. Um, last week, so I showed it there. Your elbow is going to be under your shoulders. You've got that nice solid stacking of joints. If that bothers your back right away, then back off and put your rib cage down on the mat and just have your hands under your shoulders with your elbows sticking up like that so you're not up as far. Your head is off the mat and your shoulder heads, that's off. But if you're okay here, then you have your elbows under your shoulders 
hands can be wherever they like to seem to want to be. So whether they're parallel or whether they're in slightly more or out a little bit, if you want, you can put your hands together in prayer. You can even clasp opposite elbows. So set up whatever seems to feel natural for you. Just make sure that you feel um, quite solid there. Your head, again, it's basically whatever it seems to feel natural. So if you find looking on the floor about a meter in front of you, three feet um, or so, works to keep your head feeling in this nice alignment um, of your spine. String of pearls is how I was taught. But now they've changed it a little bit that if you feel like it's better just to let your head dangle, then do that. Or if you want to look down, if that seems better for your neck, um, either uh, any head position is totally okay. Close your eyes. Check in with your bum and your legs and you want to try to relax them and the more you relax them, you'll notice there's a little bit more work required of the low back and of maybe into the arms, a little bit more support there. Notice if you put a slight, and I mean very slight, yin is very little muscle work, a slight effort into the um, elbows, how that increases the sensation in the low back. Remember, you just want sensation. Don't make it sensational. We hold poses in yin. So you never want to stay with any kind of pain. For those of you that are feeling you could have a little bit more of a back bend, you might like to lift the lower limbs up into the air like that. As long as you can find a sweet spot, I like to say, where they just kind of float there. Listen to your breath. It should be like it was in that opening meditation. Calm in through the nose, back out through the nose. So as I said, muscles, we don't really work a lot with muscles from time to time, but we work with connective tissues in yin, fascia, ligaments, tendons, sheets of fascia that encase muscle encase organs, threads and fibers that run through muscle. All of that requires a little bit of exercise, but not in the way we exercise muscle. Yin has these holds, as I mentioned. Now, if you want to go a little deeper for the last two minutes here, let your legs float down, wing your hands out so that the fingers are pointing to the side, and push into those palms, straightening your shoulders. Crack on my elbow. Maybe walk your hands back a little bit. This is called seal pose. And Bernie Clark always says, resist the urge to bark. You can push into your arms slightly, rising up out of your shoulder girdle. Notice what that does to your low back. Make sure that you're relaxing your bum and your legs as much as possible. And if you find, whoa, this is too much, just stay with the Sphinx pose. And if you find that's too much, this is your first encounter with yin and your back is complaining, then go back down to either that baby cobra I showed you or just lie with your forehead on your stacked hands. That's a bit of a back bend right there. So pushing is on option or using them as strong posts and draping down into the shoulder girdle. Either way, your bum and your legs are as relaxed as possible. And again, for those of you that are really bendy this morning and you feel like you want even more of a back bend, then those legs again find that sweet spot. But relax the butt muscles. And finally, wherever you are, if you want to bring it into your neck, you can pull your chin in so you feel how that lengthens the back of the neck and then lift up from the chin. Check your breathing. Steadily in through the nose, back out through the nose. There's just three principles in yin, only three. First one is this edge that we always look for, a comfortable discomfort, kind of tugging, 
second is being still there, resisting the urge to back away. Unless there's pain, then we definitely do back away or modify. Just a few more breaths here. And the other component to stillness is the inner stillness that I've already mentioned. Practicing with awareness. Now take an inhale. And on the exhale, come all the way down slowly. We tend to feel kind of broken and fragile when we come out of these long holds. Stack your hands. Put one side of your head on those stacked hands. Pull that same leg up alongside of you, whatever side you're head is on. Puff your low back out with your breath. And that helps to release it. So we always take a minute or a minute or so just to notice the sensations when we come out of poses and to recover <clears throat> and then slide your leg back down push up onto all fours <clears throat> and we'll come into two poses um, for one side and then we'll do the same two poses on the other side so we're going to start with our right knee um, <clears throat> where your wrist is, slide your right knee up towards it, like so. And then swivel that foot up around towards your left wrist. Now check in with this right knee. If this is torquing it in any way, if there's any kind of pain, come back out, go back down onto your back, and you can do the same pose on your back. So lie down, put your ankle above the left knee, see how the knee turns out, but there's no pressure on it. You can control how much pressure you want by lifting this left leg off, reach through. This is called eye of the needle. So that's your option. For those of you that are okay here, slide your left leg back, use your toes, until you just kind of stop. A lot of people, their butt cheek is up in the air like this, and that's not safe for this knee, too much pressure. So put something there. If you don't have a yoga block, maybe a book can be there. Uh, maybe you don't need something that high. Grab a little quilt. Get my quilting in here all the time, and then um, set back on, on your butt cheek on, on that quilt or a cushion if you've got a cushion handy, whatever, whatever seems to work. Some of you might find that your um, butt cheek does come down to the floor. Make sure that you're not crooked in order to do that. It's more important to have this low back level rather than being um, out of alignment. So, um, in fact, feel right now that left hip bone and check it and make sure that it's pointing down towards your mat that you're not um, swiveled at an angle like that try to swivel it down so this is a back bend here right now you can maybe even walk your hands back a little bit if you want to increase it keep that right foot flexed a little bit that helps protect your knee and be sure that this knee is out to the side okay so that you're not sitting on your foot you want to feel a little bit of abduction happening, so feel the tug that you're getting in the groin. Steady breathing. And if you haven't noticed much of a back bend, move your torso back just a little bit. Notice how that pulls in the front of the left hip a little bit more. Now inhale, and if you're on your back, you just stay where you are. Walk your hands forward if you're sitting up. We're coming to sleeping swan now. You can rest on your forearms like this. You might like to turn the elbows out to the side like we did after Sphinx and rest your forehead on your stacked hands or your forearms. Some of you might find that your forehead can go right down to your mat. Then you have options. You can stretch your hands out in front of you, palms down, or palms together in prayer like you're going to dive in some nice water. Or for those of you that have been doing yin for a while and you're quite comfy in swan, one arm can go down or maybe both. And then you just relax as much as you can. Remember, your breath is your guide. So if you find that your breath cannot seem to go back to that lovely, steady, 
calm inhale and exhale that we had in the beginning and back off ask yourself what can you do to change things a little bit you can also if you like use a block here for your forehead especially if you um, find that your nose gets squished take your glasses off though too that's another tip and then you can let your arms just relax it's a nice kind of pull under the arms as well and across the shoulders so that's another option Breathing in, breathing out. Keep trying to relax those legs. Now notice how the hip joints are in completely different orientations. That right hip joint, feel how it's outer rotated. Do you feel sensation in the outside point of your hip? maybe on the inside point where the groin is you're getting a tug there and maybe it goes into the inner thigh probably also feeling quite a bit of pressure down the entire outside line of that leg into the mat maybe you find your ankle bone on the outside so the outside pressure is hitting trigger points along the gallbladder meridian line. Even if you no longer have the gallbladder organ, you do have gallbladder chi, gallbladder energy. Chinese don't view the body as separate entities. It's a whole. <clears throat> so you have a gallbladder chi throughout. And in all organs, there's gallbladder chi. Find the left leg it's extended, find the pressure from the front of the hip running right down the center of that leg. Maybe a little bit to the inside. Find your big toe, the liver meridian ends there. So it begins there and the gallbladder meridian ends there. Now slowly come up, <coughs> lean to your right side. If you're on your back, go to your one side and pause there for a moment. Swing this back leg all the way around, and we come, I'll face you now, we come into shoelace pose. So ideally, you swing it around, and you stack. Maybe lift up, snuggle those knees together, and then sit down. For a lot of us, you're in your, my way, sweetie pie. For a lot of us, um, this isn't going to happen, or it's maybe the knee stays up here, and there's no way the knee will come down. So lean back, straighten out your bottom leg, which is your right leg and then try bringing this knee across and stack knee on knee. So be mindful that it's not ankle on top of your knee. Try to slide the knees together, almost like you're sitting in a chair with a skirt on or even pants and we tend to cross our legs, except for instead of letting the leg dangle down, we're trying to turn it around so we've got a bit of outer rotation happening here in your hip. The other thing you wanna do here is this can aggravate sciatica is sit on the edge, just your sit bones on the edge of a little rolled up quilt. <clears throat> You're being really participant this morning, aren't you? Um, if the knee, whether it's your bottom leg is straight or it's up in the air, if it's up in the air, put something in between if you like. Again, a block or maybe another quilt or a cushion. Same with if you can lean back and have both of your legs straight but there's a gap here then do that same thing so that you've got something for this top leg the left leg is on top that it's relaxing all right and now we're going to add a twist so we're going to twist over to the left so take your right arm and just rest it above that uh, left thigh that's on top your left arm wrap it behind your waist and twirl over move your chin over your shoulder so it's like you're looking far behind you trying to see what's um, behind you you can even make it a bit of an eye exercise so look far out of the corner of your left eye feel those little tiny muscles working and then let your eyes fall softly shut and let your eyes go where they naturally would go tiny muscles so we don't work them very long 
relax your legs. Now notice if you're pushing yourself around. Try not to do that. Relax your arms and just find the shape of the pose. Find your breath in through the nose, back out through the nose. Steady breathing. We hold for time with our muscles as soft as we can so that we can get to those connective tissues I mentioned. They will respond to these static tugs that we're experiencing. Now inhale slowly back to the center and we'll do a side bend here. So your left leg is on top, walk your left hand out to the left. And try not to just collapse over, but think about a, an archway. Think about your spine being tall and then curving over. Think about your left ear. Let it drop towards your left shoulder so you're bringing it into your uh, neck vertebrae. But if that bothers your neck at all, then don't. Just keep your head in line. Walk that hand out. A block can be really handy here. You can set it down and rest your forearm on it, maybe. This right arm just kind of hangs out wherever it feels natural. You might want to wrap it behind your waist. You might want to let it sit in your lap. Breathing in. Breathing out. Feel that delicious tug you're getting from the top of your right hip bone pelvis there. And along the rib cage, there's this zigzaggy feeling maybe, even when we were in the side, or the twist a little bit as well. But definitely you can feel this zigzaggy feeling. And if you want, for these last 30 seconds, bring that right arm and rest it on your head, the side of your head. Some of you may find that you can go right down onto the mat, as long as it's no effort, and you listen to your breath. In through the nose, back out through the nose. Just a couple more breaths. Push gently, undo that arm if it was over, come back up to the center, exhale. Sit there for another moment, and then yay, we get to undo our legs. Enjoy this, so take the top one off, bring the bottom one out, lean back on your hands. Enjoy that release in all the various areas. You might feel it in your ribs, you might have a bit of a head rush, maybe your neck, your legs, your hips. Breathe out those legs, give them a bounce, rock. And then we'll do that on the other side. <clears throat> so, coming over onto all fours again, unless you know you need to do swan pose, the first one that we did, um, on your back. Maybe this side though is, um, maybe this knee is, is, an, is the okay knee, or maybe this isn't the good knee, so you do go to your back. Slide your left knee up to your left wrist, and swivel that foot up towards the right. Tuck those toes under, move back, back, until, come forward, a little bit more there, there, until you feel, um, until you just stop. And remember, if your butt cheek is not on the mat, um, put something under it, whether it's a block, or maybe it's a cushion or a rolled up yoga mat, just to level out this low back. Your left knee's going out to the side a little bit. Maybe you can make it go out a little bit more to the side. Flex that left foot a little bit. That'll help for protecting your knee. And then remember we spend the first minute in full swan. So if you've already walked your way down, then come back up. This is a back bend here, but it's a pretty strong pull in the front of your right hip. So easy does it. Make sure your shoulders aren't up to your ears and your jaw isn't clenched. Find a focus point on your mat, maybe, or let your eyes close. 
Go inside, find the yin side of the pose. Relax those legs as much as you can. Now inhale, and we're gonna to come to Sleeping Swan now. So walk forward. This is the one where you might wanna take your glasses off, turn your elbows out to the side, stack your hands, or use your forearms as a pillow. Or if you have a block handy, then put the block under, under your head. Arms can be stretched out then. Your head can be on your mat if you like as well. Stretch your arms out, palms flat or palms together in prayer. Listen to your breath. Maybe some of you that have been doing yin for a while might like to move one arm down or maybe both of them. You definitely do need to take your glasses off if you're doing that though. Because your head will be, face will be squished a bit into the mat. Well, the glasses for sure. So this one's a great one for the liver and the gallbladder meridian line. We have these energy highways within us. And it's fascinating because the Chinese, when they traveled thousands of years ago, and yoga's been around for 5,000 plus years, when the Chinese, whose culture is ancient as well, traveled and found yogis doing these poses and talked with them and discovered the lines of energy, it's pretty fascinating that the East Indians map of the energy highways in the body was almost identical. You can overlay them and it's remarkable how similar they are to the Chinese map of energy lines of the body. And the Chinese use these energy highways and lines um, as pathways and they use them where there's to find where there's maybe blockages, or maybe restrictions in flow of energy. And they use that for acupressure or acupuncture. We're doing acupressure on ourselves here too. And we put these steady static pressures on these lines, much like deep tissue massage, which is another benefit of yin. These tugs right at right to our edge. And then that releasing and the blood flow that was constricted rushes into those areas. So just like deep tissue massage, it flushes out toxins. And it also puts pressure on these acupressure points. And here we're getting gallbladder down the outside line of your leg and liver meridian energy on the inside line of your leg in the groin area. Now on an inhale, you're gonna slowly come up out of this. Whatever is under this left butt cheek, move it up to one side so you can lean to that side. Swing that back leg all the way around. <coughs> I'll face you. And then again, sit your sit bones just on the edge of the quilt. So this time our right leg comes across on top. If you have your knees stacked in full shoelace, maybe lift a little bit and snuggle those knees together and then sit back down. Um, if you did half shoelace on the first side with the bottom leg straight, then do that. Remember the other little um, tips of help here is you can put a block between the knees. If your bottom leg is straight, it'll be your left leg that's straight and your right leg's resting. Same thing, you can put something, maybe the block is too much, maybe it's just another quilt that you need to cushion that knee. Maybe it's the underneath of the bottom knee. If it's straight, you're getting a pressure on the back of your knee and down that hamstring. So maybe you roll up another quilt underneath there, like so. All right, and then we do this twist. So we're going over to the right this time. Take your left arm just in front of that thigh. Wrap your right arm behind your waist and twirl over. Think about your chin, bring it over your shoulder 
be careful that you're not looking down or that your chin isn't up. Maybe shake your head no, nod it yes to keep it in the center. Look far out of the corner of your right eye, just for a little bit of eye exercise there. Feel those tiny muscles work. And then bring your eyes back to a regular, normal resting position and close them. Find your breath. Same steady rhythm in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Feel how the rib cage is getting a nice twirl and a squeeze. That's squeezing those internal organs, which is good for them as well. Again, that constriction of blood flow. When we unwind, fresh supply of blood rushes into those constricted areas. With your yogic breathing, your blood is richer in oxygen than when you started. So that's nourishing our inner organs. But that flush of blood through there, just like deep tissue massage, helps to flush out toxins. So notice the pull you're getting in your hips. You've got a squishy feeling happening in your groin. You've got a good tug going down the outside point of, from your hip joint down the outer legs. But notice the inner leg sensation as well. Now inhale your way back to the center and exhale. And then we'll do the side bend. So we walk our right hand out to the side. Wrap your left hand left arm beneath or behind your waist. Use a block here to rest your forearm on if you like. If that's too much, then just rest on your hand and go to the side. Remember that archway that you're kind of thinking of? So don't collapse into your spine. Try to think of length and over. And you might find that eventually some of you go right down to the floor, onto your mat. Think about your right ear coming towards your right shoulder. Listen to your breath. Fabulous tug that's happening on that left hip joint. Kind of a zigzaggy feeling up the rib cage. If you like, you can take this arm and rest it on the side of your head. The arm that was wrapped behind your waist. But don't do it if it puts too much pressure. Last, not quite 30 seconds here. So that zigzaggy tugging you're getting from your armpit down your rib cage to the outer point of your hip joint, that's the pathway of the gallbladder meridian. Maybe you're even feeling some zigzaggy feel on the side of your neck. It goes there too. It actually wraps around the ear. It starts in the outer corner of the eye. It goes across the head there. It wraps around the ear and then this zigzagging down. Now push into that right hand. Undo your arm. Come slowly back up to the center. And here comes the good part. Undo these legs. Lift the leg, top leg off. Ooh, bring that bottom leg out. Lean back on your hands. Enjoy that release. The rebound of the pose should feel fabulous. And then straighten out those legs. Maybe you just stay still and keep enjoying this. The blood rushes back into those areas. Or maybe you bounce, rock. Maybe you feel like you need windshield wipers. Maybe you do a little bit of all of that. Or just stay still your practice. No rush, but when you're ready, swivel sideways on your mat, sit your sit bones just on the edge so you almost feel like you're rocking off that little quilt rolled up or a cushion. If you have tight hamstrings, um, I have lots of men with tight hamstrings and some runners as well that they sit on a block to help get this lift and a tilt forward of their pelvis because otherwise they're here and there's nowhere for them to even try to go forward. So try to have that slight elevation and 
forward tipping of your pelvis. You can even feel it if you do that one hand on your low back, one hand on your belly, and you can feel this tilt. You want to try to have it a little bit tilted forward. Feel, have your legs far enough apart that you can feel a tugging going on on the inside line of these legs. Um, what are we doing for time here? Oh, okay. So we're going to inhale over the right leg and then start to lean forward over it. If this is too much on the hamstrings, use your hands beneath the back of the knee and that'll take some of the pressure off it. So that's one little trick you can do. If it's still bothering the back of your knee, you've got quite tight hamstrings, slip a block underneath it. If that's too much, then again, trusty quilts, roll up a little quilt and put it beneath the back of the knee. So feel how this is a twist and don't let your back round if you have any low back issues with discs. So keep the tummy pulled in and just lean forward. Don't, don't round. If your low back is fine, there's no disc issues, then definitely let that back round as much as you can. Let your head dangle if that's okay for the back of your neck. You might find a block can be really nice here and rest your forehead on the block. Find a balance on that shin and then you can just hang out marinate in this pose. Feel the tugging that's going along the inside line of your legs. Take your mind to your spine and notice how it's different on either side of the low spine. There's quite a strong tug on the left side above the pelvis, the sacrum area. There's a bit of a squish feel on the right side. We're not pulling, we're letting gravity do the work. Maybe walk your hands a little further forward. Make sure your legs are as relaxed as you can. Let your head go. Breathing in. Breathing out. Slowly now, we'll just stay there two minutes. Come back up to the center. Exhale. Inhale your way over to that left leg and then slowly either letting your back round or keeping that tummy pulled in and leaning from the hip. Lean over that leg. This is more about the inside lines of the legs tug that we're getting than about how far you can go over. Um, leaning over just adds that um, back part to this. And remember in yin we don't pull because then we're using muscles and we'll not be able to get at the connective tissues and you really want to feel this tug into the groin this is a great one for the liver meridian i've done a few zigzaggy and outer leg pulls down the zigzagging down the ribs and that's for the gallbladder this is a great one for the liver meridian so you may be feeling some sensation on the outside line of your legs and the outside part of your hips as well and you may also be noticing some emotions pop up with these longer holds. Quite often when we do a liver and gallbladder flow, for some reason, people start to feel a little bit annoyed or irritated or even downright angry. And it could be that since the liver is controlling the flow, capital L liver, flow of your emotions, maybe there's a blockage somewhere along this line or energy just not flowing freely and we can touch upon these feelings of irritation or anger just know that it's something that maybe needs to work its way out of your body so think of exhaling out the anger or the irritation bringing in peace on an inhale Slowly come back up to the center. Exhale, notice how your back is feeling. Enjoy that rebound. And now we're gonna go straight down the center. Blocks can be lovely here. You can stack two of them on top of each other, maybe. And then rest your forehead on. If you need one only for your forehead, then do that. Find a good spot for it. Maybe your arms go out to the side. <clears throat> Legs can be bent more if you don't have enough supports to three blocks to go underneath and in front of you. Then just pull your heels in like this, like so. Have 
could bend in those legs if you have your foot soles down if you like not a problem and just lean maybe from the hips with a flat back if you've got low back or disc issues but if not then let your back round again maybe at some point and again we're not pulling we're just completely relaxing down maybe at some point you turn the block to another side you can have your arms in front or maybe you'd like to have them out towards your your feet if you are resting on a block nice for the shoulders here to do that steady breathing in through your nose back out through your nose We hold these poses for time in the end too because we're working on connective tissues. Muscles love to be warm and do repeats and pumped with a little rest and then do it again, but not so connective tissues. We can really damage them if we do that. So we just want a steady tug. And we hold that tug for minutes, just at that comfortable discomfort level. And that actually stimulates the cells that produce connective tissues. So those fibroblasts and chondrocytes get to work and make some more cells. And over time, this gives us this little bit more length, a little bit more freedom of movement, better blood flow, we're not quite as stiff and creaky, and we tend to be happier humans. About another 30 seconds here. Now on your next inhale, you're going to slowly uncurl. Come all the way up. Your head will come last. Be mindful you sometimes get a little bit of a head rush. That was seven and a half minutes with both sides switching and down the center. So easy does it. Leave your legs where they are. Lean back on your hands. It releases the back and the hips. It should feel lovely. And then again, you have options. You can just be still bringing your legs back together. Maybe you do windshield wiper. Maybe you feel that you need that uh, motion back in the hips. Maybe you want to let the knees open to the side and arch your back and look up. That's nice for the back. Even more so, putting a little bend there. And whatever you need. And then when you're ready, come down onto your backs. We're going to do Bananasana, banana pose. <clears throat> so lie down. You can cradle your head in your hands, just like you're lying in a hammock. These things out of the way. We're going to slide over, slide our left elbow down. Keep both of your shoulders, though, on your mat. So don't twist. Keep your elbows open and slide your shoulders over so you're doing a side bend now slide your legs up towards that left elbow so if you're thinking that you could touch your left ankle bone with your left shoulder that's the motion so we have this nice curvy banana shape just like we didn't curl our shoulders up off the floor make sure you're not twisting um, your uh, spine at all that your both your butt cheeks are in contact with your mat so if you did start to twist up get that right butt cheek flat down onto your mat so you feel this delicious tug up the left 
sorry, that will be the right side of you. We're going over to the left. If your arms start to get tingly by cradling your head, take your head off your hands and just have your arms out in goal post. Bent at the elbows. Now, cross your legs, whichever one feels naturally that you want to cross, at the ankles. And relax. Notice if that does anything. Changes it a little bit. Undo those legs, cross the other way. Again, notice if there's any kind of a change. And then finally, pick one of those positions. Maybe you wiggle a little bit further, more over into the left, more of a curvy banana. Think about your left ear, that it's coming towards your left shoulder, so you're bringing a side bend into your neck as well. And relax. So this last one here is a fantastic one for the gallbladder line. You can really feel that tug down the side of your rib cage to the outer point of your hip, down the outside line of your leg, right to the ankle. Steady breathing in and out. A couple more breaths. Now inhale back to the center, undo your legs if they were crossed. <coughs> Bend your legs, plant your foot soles, lift your hips into the air so you realign your spine. I like to wiggle to the other side of my mat a bit so that I'm totally on the mat. And then move your legs over, reverse the um, order of your hands so it doesn't feel as natural maybe when you've got the other hand against your head. Keep both shoulders in contact with the mat as you slide your torso over, thinking of your right elbow to touch your right ankle. Stay there for several breaths, just finding the shape on this side, feeling the tugging that's happening. Think about your right ear, that it could touch your right shoulder. Now, cross the ankles. I'm going to try both ways, even if you're pretty sure which one will end up on top, but just so that you notice each one is slightly different. Undo and then cross the other way. And when you pick your final leg position, maybe you move those legs over a little bit more, maybe wiggle your torso down a little bit more but still keep this open heart both shoulder blades are in contact with your mat both butt cheeks are on your mat breathing in breathing out delicious tug all down the side of your body another thing we don't often do throughout the course of our day side bending so this is good for your spine great for the rib cage think of that full exhalation pull those bottom ribs in and down as we tend to as we age we tend to have the lower ribs sticking up more and we can't get a full exhale so then we can't get a full inhale so keeping that cartilage that's beneath the rib cage and between the ribs limber by tugging on it as we're doing right now but also by fully exhaling with our yogic breath that helps keep that cartilage limber and from stiffening up And that's a big part of yin is counteracting actually any kind of yoga the aging process 
Now inhale your way slowly back to the center. Exhale when you get there, bend in your legs. <clears throat> Push into those feet, lift your hips into the air. And then bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins, give yourself a hug, rock over that spine. And then let go of those knees, they're both bent, drop them slowly over to the left. Turn your head and look to the outstretched right arm, your hands are in, your arms are in a T shape. You can reach down and rest your hand on the outside knee. Maybe you feel like stretching out that top leg and sliding your hand down if you like. Again, find the shape of the pose, breathe in, breathe out. There's no effort with twists. And if some of you want a deeper twist, then straighten out your bottom leg, leave your top leg bent. Either one is acceptable. Totally relaxing, but your breath is still steady. Twists help to relieve tension that might have built up in the spine. Inhale now, back to the center. Plant your feet, push into them, lift your hips into the air, set your hips down, bring your knees into your chest, draw both knees over to the left. <coughs> Rest that right hand on top, maybe straighten out that leg if you like, the top leg, and stay there so the bottom leg's bent, or maybe you want to deepen the twist, so straighten out the bottom leg and leave the top leg bent. Rest your hand on the knee or not. Turn your head and look to the outstretched right. Uh, that would be the left hand. So your left ear is coming towards your mat. Twists also restore equilibrium within your nervous system. So this ringing out of our spine that we're doing right now is beneficial on multiple levels. We've done some pretty intense poses and been asked to remain calm and quiet while well, part of us inside is maybe screaming to get out, I don't like this. And so this restores the equilibrium, that ah feeling. Now inhale your left leg back to the center, plant those feet, push into them, lift your hips into the air, set your hips down. Bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins, give yourself a hug. From here, simply straighten out your legs or take your final relaxation with your legs bent and your knees resting together. If that feels better, put something behind the knees, just like when you're in a massage. Arms are by your sides, but a little bit of space. Same with your legs, a little bit of space. Take in a deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. Stay in final relaxation for two to three, four minutes. This allows your body to absorb the benefits of the practice. I'll let you take your relaxation quietly by yourself. It's as important as the rest of the practice, so enjoy. Thank you for joining me this morning with the In Yoga. The light within me honors the light within each one of you. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.